Before I go into this SmackDown review, I'm just going to address some stuff that happened at Survivor Series as I didn't do the review, and thank God I didn't, and some of the big stuff from Monday Night Raw. So I did actually watch Survivor Series. I made an effort to watch the show, and it was just blare. It was really nothing more. It was nowhere near a big four pay-per-view quality. And to be honest with you, at the end of the day, I didn't really care to review it. The opener and the tag match was good. The world title match just never had me invested as I knew exactly who was going to win. And the main event never really ever felt like a main event. It just felt bleh, in my opinion. And then at the end of the show, they teased Randy Orton versus John Cena with people chanting Daniel Bryan in the background, which kind of made me laugh. And my question, I guess, is, do people really want to see this? Do they really want to see John Cena versus Randy Orton? Okay, I get it. They're two big names, probably the two biggest names in WWE, I guess you could say, in the current era. John Cena, the actual face of WWE, and Randy Orton, the so-called face of WWE, going at it, you know, for the One Heavyweight Championship and the WWE Championship. And that's what they teased on Survivor Series. And I was thinking, maybe they're teasing something for WrestleMania, you know, going for a big match at WrestleMania. And then we get to Raw, and they do this unification title match, or whatever it's going to be, at TLC. I'm like, John Cena and Randy Orton in this big match at TLC. I feel a pay-per-view. Is this really good business, WWE? You know, I, I, I think there isn't really going to be a unification. They're both going to grab their own belts or something, or it's going to lead to some bullshit finish, which is going to lead to another match between these two, maybe at Royal Rumble. But to have the first match of that kind in quite some time happen at TLC... Are WWE just trying to find ways to troll people? Are they trying to find ways to troll fans such as ourselves? Like, well, are they thinking to themselves, right, we've got to have a big buy rate to end the year because Survivor Series isn't going to do very well because we built up to it like shit. And they're giving us John Cena versus Randy Orton. And I'll re-emphasize this question. Do you want to see it? You know, I think with me, it's not a question of whether or not I want to see it. It's just, the, for me, the timing. You know, this kind of thing should be happening at WrestleMania, in my opinion. And I just wonder why there is a reason why WWE are doing it here. Because it seems stupid to have it here and not happen at Royal Rumble or WrestleMania 30, which is essentially where you'd save a big match like this. But anyway, give me your thoughts on that down in the comment section below. Oh, and by the way, WWE, Raw viewership dropped every hour because people didn't give a shit about the main event, which was John Cena and Big Show versus Randy Orton and Alberto Del Rio. How many more pushes does Alberto Del Rio need before WWE realizes that no one cares about him? Anyway, rant over. Survivor Series sucked. I did actually watch Raw, and I was entertained by a couple of aspects, but that didn't really have... You know, much to it in my opinion. And let's get on to SmackDown! So in the opening segment of this week's edition of SmackDown, we had Curtis Jobber, I mean Axel, with Ryback Ry versus Mark motherfucking Henry and Big E motherfucking Langston. You know, having Mark Henry and Big E Langston team up as part of this new sort of tag team palooza thing they've got going on in WWE right now. It's a damn good idea. I hope somewhere down the line they have Mark Henry turn heel on Big E Langston and they have a few. That'll be pretty awesome. But... You know, a couple of things I noticed about this segment. You know, they couldn't give Mark Henry, the guy who just returned to Survivor Series to defeat Ryback in the Open Challenge match. Couldn't give him an entrance. Really? He's only just returned. You can't give the guy an entrance. Come on, WWE. That's pretty lazy. Also, the silver lining of this, apart from Curtis Axel getting totally decimated by Mark Henry, was that... Did I hear some Biggie Langston chants over the canned heat? I definitely heard some Biggie Langston chants. I am 100% behind Biggie Langston as a IC champion, dominant babyface. That should be a damn good thing for this new character in WWE. While WWE right now are getting it with Big E Langston, the question I want to ask WWE and even Vincent Mann, who won't be watching this video and who can blame them? I'm just an internet guy here with just some opinions on the show. But how does a guy like Ryback go from, oh, Vince's favorite character, we're going to push him to the moon, and this is definitely one we're going to get right, uh, just like every other star we've pushed in this company. How does he go from that to what he is like now, where no one cares about him, and he's at the background in segments, and he's losing matches, and he's a stupid heel? How do you go from there to there in a year? 
only WWE and their inability to create new stars would that ever happen. And while they're trying with people like Biggie Langston, and they're trying with people like Roman Reigns, etc., I really don't have much hope in WWE down the line in making any stars. I mean, Ryback seemed like the perfect fit for WWE, and whether or not it just didn't develop over the year like they thought he may do after a push, I don't know. But if Ryback is an example to go off, why would I have confidence in WWE to make a star out of a guy like Biggie Langston or Roman Reigns? I mean, you look what they did with Del Rio. No one gives a shit about him anymore because they shoved him down our throat way too much. Same thing happened with someone like Sheamus. People got fed up with him because they were fed up with people shoving them down his fucking throat. So WWE, we're at a period now where we need to make some new stars. You just need to do a better job with these things. And I know I'm only a wrestling fan, but it's very evident right now that even just as a simple-minded internet wrestling fan, that you're just not setting the foundation for the future of your company, which is something that you really really need to be thinking about quite hard right now. Five years ago, you should have been thinking about this. And yet we're in this pretty much same position, if not decline slightly, from that point in time. Get thinking. Not even going to talk about the main event of Survivor Series. I'm going to talk about this interview segment with Rene Young and Randy Orton. Apparently, the whole time, Randy Orton was playing possum and didn't need the authorities help to beat Big Show in the main event of Survivor Series. And when questioned on this, he walks out. And do you know why he walked out of this interview? Now, it's not because he was annoyed at Rene Young's questioning. It's not because he's doubting himself. It's not because the authorities are getting in his way. It's because he knows. He knows deep down inside, deep, deep down inside, that he is not the real face of the WWE. Randy Orton, oh yeah. Ever since Cena's returned, he has realized that Cena is the real face of the WWE people. When I saw 3MB versus Los Matadores and El Torifo, there was two things, maybe three things, that were going through my head. The first of which was, you know, where the hell have these guys been lately? Where have Los Matadores been? I mean, they're on this massive push coming into the WWE, and all of a sudden, I don't really remember seeing them or really have any recollection of them winning any kind of match, and... They weren't part of Survivor Series, which in my opinion was a real shame. I thought they'd have been perfect on the pre-show. And the second thing that comes to my head is you've got to give it to WWE sometimes. Only in WWE can you have a small guy dressed in a bull suit doing fully fledged wrestling moves on three fully grown guys and actually beating them and in some cases dominating them. Only in the WWE can we get that, which is why they call themselves World Wrestling Entertainment. Well, the entertainment aspect has, you know, ceased to exist in WWE in some ways or form, but they feel they can get it back by having a small guy dressed in a ball suit doing moves on three full-grown guys. Maybe one. Okay, maybe by one, but not all three. But the silver lining of this, once again, is the fact that 3MB suck and El Tarifo is awesome, so the fact that he's actually beating these three guys shows how shit 3MB always will and always are. Tensai and Brodus Clay versus our truth and Xavier Woods. Two stupid-ass, irrelevant tag teams in a match which I didn't give a shit about. And I'm just sitting there thinking, can we please just push Brodus Clay as a monster heel now, please? You know, where the fuck did kayfabe go in WWE lately? I mean, you look at that segment from Raw they had with Miz, Strahan, and Titus O'Neil, and you're thinking to yourself, a couple of things here come to mind. And it annoys a lot of wrestling fans, and I can understand that. You know, you've got Miz, who's supposed to be a heel. And you've got Tyson Hill is supposed to be a face. Strahan is just a, a guess, so I'm guessing he's a face. Number one, they're attempting to do hip tosses on each other. So they're pretty much saying right there that wrestling is predetermined and scripted. And that is what we do when we might as well say it to all the world because there's no illusionment anymore at all. Secondly, why the hell were Miz, Strahan... And Titus O'Neil, Miz supposed to be a heel, by the way. Why are they all doing the millions of dollars thing? It's almost like bad guy and good guy coexist in WWE. And we're all one big family and everything. No, that's not how you're supposed to present your product, WWE. Also, is Miz a heel now? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Miz, he teased the heel turn. And he beats Kofi Kingston on Survivor Series pre-show. Goes to shake his hand. And then Kofi Kingston slaps him. 
So is Kofi Kingston going to be doing another wildcat gimmick, which is going to get him above the mid card? Probably not, because it would even if he did, it would never fucking get him above the mid card anyway. So I don't know what the hell is going on with that. And going from one stupid ass Raw segment to a stupid ass SmackDown segment. I know I wasn't the only one that saw as soon as Titus O'Neil won that eating contest, and as soon as he was going to be going up against Cesaro, everyone and their fucking mothers and daughters and granddaughters and grandsons and cousins and uncles and everyone else of the fucking family who's fucking eating Thanksgiving. As soon as that happened, we all knew that he was, was going to face Cesaro, he was going to get him in that swinging spot, and then Titus O'Neil was going to be sick. Oh, oh, what happened? Cesaro swung him around for a little bit, and Titus O'Neil was comedically sick all over JBL's hat, Michael Cole, and Zeb Coulter. <gasps> oh, you really got me with that one, didn't you, WWE? Looks like from Survivor Series that Roman Reigns is going to be getting a massive push in WWE, and maybe, the I'm guessing, the next year or so. You don't eliminate four people from Survivor Series unless someone backstage is very, very high on you and they want you to go quite far. Reference Diesel. I believe it was back in 94 or 95 when he eliminated four people from Survivor Series, I believe, and he ended up being the WWE Champion very soon afterwards, or the WWF Champion at the time. Yes, he was the lowest drawing WWE Champion, or WWF Champion, but you get my point. And to be honest with you, I, I kind of like the fact they're pushing Roman Reigns. I think out of the shield, he is the most unique guy there, and I think he's the kind of guy that Vincent Mann and a lot of people backstage and in the wrestling business would love to push. He has the look and everything like that. You know, we haven't really seen his Mike skills yet, but he is that kind of guy. He's a, quite a young guy. He's one of those characters that we just want to see a little bit more of and see him branch out from the shield a little bit. And in the Royal Rumble, he'll no doubt eliminate loads and loads of people. Maybe he'll go on and break Kane's record. I doubt he will, but there you go. But this Roman Reigns push, I'm really looking forward to it. Then I get onto this SmackDown. I guess you could call it main events. You have Cody Rhodes and Goldust versus The Shield for the Tag Team Championships. With Dean Ambrose on commentary. You know, the match was going along pretty well. And then it ended in a DQ. And CM Punk made the save. Vicky Guerrero makes it a six-man tag. Cody Rhodes and Goldust and uh, CM Punk versus The Shield. And then you had the Wyatts come out. And you had the Usos come out. And then you had Ray coming out. And then it became a 12-man tag. And I hate it when WWE does this shit. When they start off with one match, not only do they bury the tag team championships and make them seem irrelevant, they have one interference. Oh, we'll set up another match. Then they have more interference. Oh, we're going to set up another match, and that's going to be a main event of the show. I hate it. When WWE do shit like this, it's such lazy booking. One match, interference, next match, interference. It's just... Ugh. You know what, with it being Thanksgiving... I may forgive WWE somewhat, as they may have been really looking forward to getting into that turkeys of theirs. But goddamn, in my opinion, this was such a shit way to end SmackDown this week. And a very fitting way to end what has been a very bad week for WWE. And also quite a bad week for me too, as I got knocked off my bike by a car on Tuesday. Yes, and I didn't even manage to get a haircut either. Hell, I can't even have a shower right now because they had to glue up this fucking eye. Terrible way to end SmackDown, in my opinion. This whole show in general, just... Ah, oh, I, I just just could have left this show. It's almost like WWE just... Like on Raw, when they just had all the, all the rematches down there. And they had a main event no one gave a shit about. And they just... It seems like on Thanksgiving week, WWE just got really lazy. Put out this and said, right, we're going to eat. We're going to go eat our turkey now. And I guess if you're a WWE employee, you can get that a lot more than I do, but I am a wrestling fan and I want to be entertained from a week in, week out basis. And the fact that I haven't paid for any pay-per-view since I believe WrestleMania, you know, kind of shows you the direction WWE are going in. And the product, a lot of people may think is getting better. As soon as Daniel Bryan was on top, the product was great. Now John Cena and Randy Orton are back on top. The product is all of a sudden gone a bit shit. It really has. And the rating from Raw, what was it, a 2.7, 2.8 in the end? And the viewership went down hundreds of thousands every single hour. I mean, and people chanting Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, when the Randy Orton and John Cena had a face-off on Survivor Series and when it got announced on Raw. 
Does it mean does it show you how out of touch WWE are with their fans? I don't know. You let me know down in the comment section below. Thoughts on Survivor Series, all the shit that happened in Raw, and this edition of SmackDown. You could tell it was a Thanksgiving edition, couldn't you? It's been me, Mr. Parkin. And yeah, this is what my hair looks like when I'm pretty stressed and I actually, yeah, and I put it up like that a little bit. Kind of looks like I have an afro. My mum is from, my mum's father is from Barbados, so it sometimes does happen. Thank you very much for watching this review, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. And please, please tell me, even though us British do not, do not actually celebrate Thanksgiving, tell me what you're thankful for. Because I sure as fuck wasn't thankful for Survivor Series Raw or SmackDown this week. See ya!